what a surprise. Ryan is going to shit on Roosh. <laughs> guys mids watch got a great one now one of our uh, blue pill professor one of our oldest and longest running like moderators of the married red pill subreddit put up an old return of kings article from 2015 from a guy a v yader about why you shouldn't care when she cries during a breakup now i'm not gonna bother reading it all to you i put a link to it in the live chat i'll probably put a link to it in the chat of the video when you watch this one it's one of those standard tips and tricks articles. Don't cry during a breakup. And the reasons are she doesn't think she can do better is probably the reason, you know, perceived inadequate recompense for pussy apportioned. Like, I don't know, it's like very weird. Looks like she looks like the bad guy, which is why she's crying. Actually, there's only three reasons, fair enough. But that's not important. The important thing is the highlights that the, the married red pill guys decided were worth talking about and old friend Jack Tina Hearts and his responses to it as well as commentary from me. So the reasons women lose their shit and start crying over a breakup can be broken down into three categories. She doesn't think she can do better. She doesn't get adequate compensation for having sex with you. Or she's embarrassed and it made her look like a bad person. All women, even the best ones, care about what they can do more than they care about you as a person. Eh, yada, yada, yada. Just read the thing. We'll quote the, the, the parts here when we start attacking this from a red pill lens. Because, again, nothing makes guys more irritable. The ones that have done the work. And hearing a guy run his mouth about shit, he just knows. Because he's 26 and you can't tell him nothing. So, Jack's like, I'm going to express may what may be an unpopular opinion here. And I'm hoping this can lead to a good discussion and not eating a lot of downloads. I guess we'll see. The part that he's quoting here is, you basically have to accept the fact that you're being used. You're never going to get more out of it than you put into it. The duration of any relationship is contingent upon your continued usefulness, and above all else, you can only get better. You're not allowed to slip and devolve. This is not a serious decision. This is not even a decision. Perhaps more a more charitable explanation is, when you enter a relationship, you're putting on the captain hat. There's no way to be in a relationship without being the captain, and there's no way to be a captain without accepting responsibilities of captain and the leadership that it demands. So yes, you're not allowed to slip and devolve because good captains should always be seeking to improve themselves and their ship out of principle. And he's like, when I realized this, it was actually relieving. I actually had a law and anecdote typed out here, but I deleted it and I'm going to sum it up. Several years ago, I fucked up royally, professionally, series of bad decisions. Not coincidentally, my wife and I started arguing a lot more at the same time. Eventually, I realized we weren't arguing because my goddamn gold digging whore of a wife was mad at me because I wasn't making as much money. So I didn't storm off to the red pill, which didn't exist at the time, but whatever, and rant about hypergamy and AWALT and third wave feminism and holding chicks accountable. I edited that last part. As a captain, I had essentially crashed our ship into some cliffs repeatedly. My first officer was not happy about that, and the easiest way to make her happy was to unfuck these bad decisions I had made, and that's why I say it was relieving. I didn't need to learn how to communicate. I didn't need to spend thousands of dollars complaining to some guy in a sweater vest that, you know, it's like she expects me to read my mind and have all the time to tell me to listen to my partner. I basically just had to get my shit together. So I did. I told myself something along the lines of, I realize we're having a lot of problems because of some bad decisions I made and I have a plan to fix that. And she goes, I'm really happy you said that. And we had sex that night for the first time in weeks. For a long time, I wondered why, instead of all the arguments we had, she didn't just tell me you made some bad decisions and has made me unhappy. But I realized she was actually giving me some respect. She could have nagged me about how much I fucked up and demanded I beg for my old job back. And what then? The ship's back on the sea, but I'm not really a captain anymore, and we both represent each other. The difference between a good woman and a hardcore opportunist is that a good woman will give you a grace period to get your shit together if you start to falter. That's the Roosh line. He goes, Roosh phrases this like he's throwing women a bone. Okay, women aren't total hardcore opportunists. Well, that's actually pretty significant, because most people I interact with in life are hardcore opportunists. Very few people tolerate interacting with somebody that is bringing a negative value to them. 
An employer will fire you if you can't justify your salary. Any business will cut you if they don't pay your bills. Be a shitty friend, and you're soon you're not going to have any friends. This is human nature, and I don't know why Roosh makes it seem like women in romantic relationships are the only people that do this. Back to the quotes. And more importantly, a good woman is more likely to stay loyal so long as you manage to keep that ship sailing straight and provide her with a decent life. Roosh even uses the ship sailing straight analogy here. So I ask, why does he have to phrase this concept like women are selfish, soul-destroying creatures when the point, like what's the point in dwelling on shit like Awalt and working ourselves into a rage about things like society and feminism and accountability? If you're in a relationship, you gotta be in charge. And if you're the captain, you have to be a good one. And you'll be compared against previous captains she served under and you'll have to perform better than them. So we can't, we can rant like Roosh does and say, well, if you make the decision to settle down with a woman who has a couple of men in her past, then it's imperative to realize you must be superior to them in every single way. Or every tear a woman has shed over a man can be traced back to how she was personally affected by the loss of that man's utility. But I prefer to phrase it as, first officers are unhappy when their captain makes shitty decisions, as they should be. Now to me, accepting this is a fact of life about what swallowing the red pill is about, those are the rules. They aren't negotiable. Personally, I wouldn't want them to be. Because as long as we work on improving ourselves and our lives, which we'd want to do anyway, we get to be the goddamn fucking captain. It is the best first impression I can make. So if having agency in your life and leading your life and your family isn't what you wanted in a marriage, the fuck did you want? I added some more fucks in there because I think it deserves it. Um, I like this. I've seen so many guys complaining. How come women get away with everything? You have to, you're held accountable to your decisions. They're never held accountable. I'm like, what do you want? I want to be held accountable to my decisions. You know what that means? That means life provides me with a feedback mechanism that women just don't have. I have a great video on the channel. Go check it out. It's where I make a, a Japanese egg salad sandwich or a tamago sandwich, Japanese omelet sandwich. That's the one. Talking about how women have been lied to their entire lives. They're never held accountable because guys want to fuck them. So why would you tell her the truth? Tell her what she wants to hear. Other girls won't tell the truth to them. They'll lie to them too. Oh yeah, shave your head. You'll look much hotter that way. Oh, it's just 10 pounds. If he doesn't love you, then it's his fault. Why? Because they want to be the, ch the king bitch on Bitch Mountain. And so if they tell this other girl to go jump off a cliff to be attractive and she does it, she's the better chick. So women lie to women. Men lie to women. In fact, for a lot of women, especially the attractive ones, the only time when somebody is honest to them is A, if it's dad, because dad doesn't give a shit about how hot you are. He's your dad. Shut up. <laughs> or when you hit the wall. That's why a lot of, like, girls are embittered once they pass that 30s and 40s, because all of a sudden they realize their entire life has been a lie and everybody's been lying to them. And it turns out guys aren't really kind and nice and they don't help you move because they think it's fun. It's just because everybody wanted to fuck you. They told you what you wanted to hear. And now everybody's honest with you. It's damned mean. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? I don't want that. I don't want to find out at 40 my entire life was a lie and I get zeroed out like that. I would much rather find out. If I screw up, people won't like me anymore because they like me because of the things I offer. I'm attractive. I'm fun to be around. I have a good paycheck. Like all the things you can think of that would make you attractive to a potential partner. Losing those things. Well, she's not, she's got to love me regardless of those. Like what reason do you have to do anything if there's no feedback mechanism to show you if it's a good or bad thing? If earning money had no bearing on whether your wife loved you or not, why would you earn any money? Well, maybe you don't have to. Well, maybe. But that's the thing. Don't you like those vacations? Don't you like that lifestyle you get from the money? Sure. Does your wife start demanding you earn more money? Well, do you want to? No, I already got the lifestyle I want. No. The price you pay. Shouldn't have married me. You knew what I was in for. And that's, again, honesty. That's another thing. Everybody's always like, what do, what do men and women bring to the table? You want to know what a man brings to the table? Since your dad, he's the only man in your life that's going to be honest to you. You don't know how rare a thing that is for girls. It's like honesty. Do I look fat in these jeans? Yeah, a little. How dare you? I could lie to you like three guys at your office that want to fuck you, but I think you'd rather hear an honest thing. Let's go to the gym. Fuck you. All right, whatever. But yeah, I like it. It's just one of those things. It should be a freeing example. This is why uh, guys like Rolo say hypergamy isn't a straitjacket. Hypergamy is the idea that women can look up to one thing at a time. Guys can love all women. 
You can have their wife, they can have the side piece, they can have their mom, and they can love all of them equally and it's fine. And they're still deathly loyal to their wife. Woman, it's either you or it's the next guy. It's not a straight jacket. It just means that when she's with you, she's fiercely loyal to you. She's not going to jump ship immediately just because you make one screw up if you have a good track record. If you slip up a bunch, maybe, but I mean... She's not Jesus. She's not going to forgive your sins for everything. She's a human being and they have wants and needs as much as anybody. If anything, don't you want your wife to have or a girlfriend or potential partner to have uh, expectations? It lets you know what you're in for. And if you can read those expectations, that's fine. Don't marry a gold digger because she's going to just sap all the money out of you. Well, I mean, at least you know what she was after. She was honest. If you don't want that, don't get with that one. You find a girl that likes you for the value you provide today? And then you get better over time? Fucking perfect. You can have a lifetime together. But again, uh, how do I want to sum this up? Well, easy way to say it is Roosh is an idiot. Roosh's single friends are idiots. They have no idea what they're talking about. And anybody who talks about holding women accountable or uh, hypergamy is evil or women are vindictive and opportunists, they don't know a good thing when it, when it comes. Just be glad, because it could be worse. They could be lying to you because they want to get in your pants. So I'm going to leave you with that one. Hopefully there's enough Roosh fans out there that the chat is probably just full of guys defending him against me, and to which I would say to that, I don't care. Go find Roosh at church. Didn't he find Jesus now? He doesn't need to worry about us like degenerate red pill dudes. Anyways, uh, I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.